Hello everyone, this is John Hashmat and welcome to Physics Simply. In this video, I will be solving the paper 6 exam for October November 2021 variant 1. So let's get started. Question 1 says a student investigates the stretching of a spring. Figure 1.1 shows the apparatus. We have a spring hanging from a clamp and a ruler right next to it. And we have the start and end of the loop part. A says the meter rule is clamped in position near to the spring. Write down the scale readings in millimeters from the meter rule at the top and bottom of the spring as shown in figure 1.1. We have the top reading before 44, so this is 43.9, but that's in centimeters. We multiply it by 10 to get it in millimeters as required, so it's 439. And the bottom reading is after 45 with 4 divisions. So that's 45.4, converting it to millimeters, that's 454. Double I says using the two readings, calculate the length L0 of the spring in millimeters and record L0 in table 1.1. The value of L0 is the length of the spring when the load is zero. So we subtract 454 minus 439, that gives us an answer of 15. And we record it here in the table as 15. Part B says the student suspends the load L equals 0.20 newtons from the spring. He records the new length of the spring in table 1.1. Use the equation E is equal to L minus L naught, which is 15, to calculate the extension E of the spring and record the value of E in table 1.1. So we take at 0.2 newtons the length minus the original length, and that gives us an extension of 2. Part double I says complete the extension column heading in table 1.1. We have millimeters minus millimeters that also gives millimeters. Part C says the student repeats the procedure using loads L equal to 0 0.40, 0 0.60, 0 0.80, and 1. Newtons, he records the readings and results in table 1.1. Now we are required to plot a graph of E per millimeter on the y-axis. So we label it E per millimeter and L per newton on the x-axis going down here, L per newton. And it did not say to start from the origin, but checking the readings and the requirements. We are not required to start from the origin in any question, but one of the readings for the extension and load was already zero. So we are going to start from zero and zero on the X and Y axes. As for the load, it went 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6. That's a scale of twos. So we can use that scale 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 and then 1.0 as for the y-axis we have the maximum number was 13 and the minimum number was 0 and we have here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 divisions so if we divide 13 minus 0 over 7 divisions that gives us an answer of 1.857 so choosing from 1 or 2 or 5 1 is too small so we choose 2 so we start from 0 and then we add 2, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and then 12 at this division. Now for plotting the points, we have the first point at 0 and 0, so this is the first one. Next point is at 0 0.20 and 2, so this is the second point. The next one, point 40 and 5, 5 is between 4 and 6, so this is the third point. Then we have point 6 and 8, that's an easy one at here next one is for 0.8 and 10 so this is also easy next one is for 1 and 13 13 is at this point so this is the last point now we try to draw the best fit first we try to connect the first point with the last point and check if this is a best fit so we have two points on the line and we have one two three points under the line and one point over the line so this is not exactly a best fit. Maybe we'll try the first point with the one next to last, like this. Now we have this point above the line, this point above the line, and one point below the line. So this is closer to a best fit than the previous line. Part D says figure 1.2 shows the unstretched spring and the spring with a load. On figure 1.2 show clearly the distances L0, L and E. So L0 is from the top of the spring to the bottom of the spring when there is no load added. So this is L0 or L0. And the total length of the spring after adding the load, that is the total length of, or the new length L. And the difference between the distances 
is the extension E, so this is E. Question 2 says, a student investigates the resistance of resistors in different circuit arrangements. Figure 2.1 shows the first circuit arrangement. We have two resistors X and Y connected with an ammeter, a switch, and a power supply, and a voltmeter to measure the potential difference across X. She measures the potential difference Vx across the resistor X and the current Ix in the circuit. The meters are shown in figure 2.2 and 2.3. Write down the readings, include the units for potential difference, current, or resistance where appropriate in all parts of the question. For the voltmeter, we have five divisions between 1 and 2, so each division is 0.2. So this is 1.2 volts. And for the ammeter, we have this is 0.3 and five divisions between 0.2 and 0.3. So each division is 0.02. So 0 0.22, 0 0.24, 0 0.26. That is the current 0.26 ampere. Double I says calculate Rx, the resistance of resistor X, using Vx over Ix. So we divide 1.2 by 0.26. That gives an answer of 4.61538 and so on. We can approximate that to two significant figures using the number of significant figures for these numbers and it's approximately 4.6 ohms. Part B says a student connects the voltmeter to record VXY, the potential difference across the two resistors X and Y. In series, she calculates RXY, the combined resistance of resistors X and Y, it's 10.4 ohms. She calculates the resistance RY of the resistor Y and it's 5.78. State and explain whether Rx and Ry can be considered to be equal within limits of experimental accuracy. So Rx was 4.6 and Ry was 5.78. So the difference between them is actually large compared to the number itself. So we say no because the difference is large compared to the values of the resistors. So we have a large percentage error if they are actually equal. Part C says a student connects a resistor Z in parallel with the resistor X. She connects the voltmeter to record VXZ. The potential difference across the combination of resistors X and resistor Z. Draw the circuit diagram for this arrangement and label the resistors X, Y, and Z. So for X and Z in parallel, we have two rectangles and you connect them together. And there is a branch here to show the connection with resistor Y. And we label them x y and z and this is a branch also and we can connect the voltmeter in parallel with z or with x or in the middle between x and z so we have the same branching for the same parallel connection part d says a student records v x z the potential difference across the two resistors x and z in parallel and i x z in the circuit we have 0 0.8 volts and 0 0.36 amperes and we are required to calculate the resistance of x and z vxz over ixz so 0 0.8 volts divided by 0 0.36 amperes that gives an answer of 2.2 recurring which we can approximate to two significant figures again 2.2 ohms but e says another student does this experiment using a set of three identical resistors his results show that Within the limits of experimental accuracy, the combined resistance of two identical resistors connected in series is four times the combined resistance of the same two resistors connected in parallel. To test whether his results are true for other values of resistance, he does the same procedure with other sets of three identical resistors, suggests the values of resistance he could use to reach a conclusion during a one-hour practical lesson. So, for example, we can use a set of resistors of 5 ohms, 10 ohms, 15, 20, 25, just close to the numbers we have already used, but we did not actually use 5 ohms, so we can use it here. And we need uh, 5 sets of readings or more, so this is accepted. Question 3 says a student investigates the position of the image in a plane mirror. Figure 3.1 shows the ray trace sheet. Part A says on figure 3.1 draw a normal to the line MR that passes through its center and label the normal NL and label the point at which NL crosses MR with the letter B. So first we measure the distance of MR. This is approximately 10 centimeters so the middle is at 5 centimeters. Then we use a protractor to draw a perpendicular line which means 90 degrees from the line MR. So from this point with 90 degrees like this and we extend the line downwards 
to the end of the trace sheet so we have the normal here and we label it n l and the point of intersection we label this point v now we need to draw a line seven centimeters long from b at an angle of incidence 70 degrees to the normal below mr and to the left of the normal and label the end of this line a so from this point b we draw 70 degrees from the normal so from the vertical we go 70 degrees like this just checking the length here we have one two three four five six seven that's more than seven so i'm going to erase the extra part and we label the end of this line a then we are required to draw another line seven centimeters long from b at an angle of instance 40 degrees to the normal below mr and to the left of the normal and label this end c so going back to the diagram we draw another line 10 20 30 40 degrees again a long line approximately seven centimeters long and we label this end c part b says mark with two neat crosses the positions for two pins p1 and p2 on line a b at a suitable distance support for this type of ray trace experiment so they must be at least five centimeters apart so we're gonna place one cross at the end or near the end and one cross near the start of the line and label one of them p1 and the other one p2 part c says the same places a plane mirror on line mr and views the images of pins of p1 and p2 in the mirror he places two pins p3 and p4 so that the pins p3 and p4 and images of pins p2 and p1 all appear exactly one behind the other the positions of p3 and p4 are marked on figure 3.1 Draw a line through the positions of P3 and P4 and continue the line until it meets MR. Then measure the angle alpha between the line and the normal NL below MR and include the unit. So first we connect P4 to P3 and go towards the mirror like this. Now we use a protractor to measure the angle between the normal and this line. So we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, approximately 70 degrees. So here we have the answer 70 degrees. Part D says the scene places the reflecting face of the mirror vertically on the line AB with the center of the mirror at B. He places pins 1 and P2 on the line CB. He places pins 5 and 6 so that pins 5 and 6 and the images of 1 and 2 appear all exactly one behind the other. Draw a line through pin 5 and 6 and continue the line to meet an L and measure the angle beta between the line and an L below MR and include the unit. So we connect 5 and 6 and go towards the normal so the difference here is 10 degrees and the first one was 70 this is 10 degrees more so 80 so we write down 80 degrees part e says a student investigates a possible relationship between angles alpha and beta and the angle theta remains constant at 40 degrees suggest values of the angle of incidence i that he could use we can use 30 35 40 45 and 50 or we can add 55 five readings or more question f says a student does this experiment with care suggest one practical reason why the results may not be exactly those that the theory of reflection predicts we can say that it is due to thickness of the mirror or the thickness of the pins we use part g says tick the boxes that indicate relevant precautions that the students should take with this type of ray trace experiment so carry out the experiment in the dark room you will not see anything so it's not this one draw thin lines yes to reduce the percentage error in angles keep one eye closed that may help with uh, placing the pins one behind the other keep room temperature constant that's irrelevant view the bases of the pins yes view the tops of the pins that is actually misleading so it's not the last one so it is the second third and fifth box Question 4 says, a student investigates the time taken to heat water in different uninsulated containers. The containers all have the same volume and shape. The water is heated with an electric immersion heater. The following apparatus is available, a selection of containers, measuring cylinder, thermometer, supply of cold water, immersion heater with power supply. Plan an experiment to investigate the time taken to heat water in different uninsulated containers. You should list any additional apparatus that is required or in a diagram. Explain briefly how you would carry out the investigation, state key variables that you would keep constant or control, draw a table with column headings without values, explain briefly how you would use your readings to reach a conclusion.
So we can start by drawing the equipment. We have a bench here. For example, we have a stand base with the container on top of the base, like this, and the stand here, and the thermometer immersed into the water, and the clamp holding the thermometer in the middle of the liquid with a bus attached to the stand. And this is the liquid here. And the immersion heater, we can draw the symbol for the heater, which is like a resistor with vertical lines. And the circuitry, we can add a voltmeter and an ammeter. For example, there is a voltmeter here and an ammeter with a switch connected to a power supply, like this. Or we can just say uh, that the wires are going to a power supply or the circuit. Now we label the things in the diagram. We have a clamp, we have a stand. This is a thermometer. And inside here we have the water. And this is a container or beaker. So this is a process we need. Now we can say measure a certain volume of water and pour it into the first container. Then we say set up apparatus as shown in the diagram. Then we measure the initial temperature, theta 1 of the water. Then we can say switch on the heater and start a stopwatch at the same time. Then we say wait until the water reaches a certain temperature, theta 2 and record the time t. Now this experiment is done here. Now we repeat all steps for containers made of different materials, but same dimensions and using same amount of water and initial temperature. So we mentioned the controlled variables here. And now we draw the table headings. We have the material in one column and the time per second on the other column. And these are the headings that we need. We do not enter any values or any names of the materials. So this is the end of the experiment because we have no values for the materials. So we cannot plot a graph. We just say compare values of time with material. So this is the comparison we have. So this was the end of the exam. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. Keep practicing and I will see you in another video.